Let's go. Time to play some Firewatch. Nineteen seventy five. You see Julia. Oh, shoot, I did a button. <laughs> She's about your age, late twenties, laughing with well dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You're drunk. Oh no. Uh, I'm a simp. This is what it is. You're pretty, she says coolly. You are not. You are a future hangover. <laughs> what? You reply, Kipfus? Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She flags down a waiter, and one week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Yo. Got her backpack. Backpack. Just whip it in the open trunk. Okay. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. I'm a cat person. <laughs> There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia's in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German ship. But nothing bad could happen while Julia was walking this dog. It's badass. Aww, you can pick the beagle name in Bucket. Ah. Uh, yeah, we're going Bucket. <laughs> A week later, you've totally forgotten about one of them. Julia loves him. You love him too. You talk out on the deck, it's summer, 9.30pm, and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Kids? They're not very smart, or good at much. I'm saying if you and I had some. A couple little idiots? Mm, sure. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. Yeah, absolutely right. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angry by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. Mm. I'm gonna avoid the problem. You don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plans from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. He man. You look gossip.
During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings folks from faraway places. Oh my god, we got mugged with a knife. Bucket gets kicked! She gets flustered as trouble speaking when she's stressed. You confront the attacker. I'm just gonna scare him away. You reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. He manages you manage to scare all three of you. He runs away. Julia has to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. Then we're walking by the river. Ah. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale's in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Mm, I'll let her go. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that it'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass up if that's what she wants. Dang, three times a semester. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. Uh oh. Mm, well, let's get some therapy. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She's 41. Guess we're keeping secrets. journal. I mean, oh my god. Graphic. <laughs> Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. She went back to university. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She's devastated. Permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she goes into panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family and they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while your friends come by with little things to brighten the day she gets worse. This is so sad. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. Oh no, I'm gonna let her go. Truly trucking out here. Oh my god, it's a deer! Oh, that was so majestic. <laughs> her family agrees with your decision. You find a fantastic place in Boulder and move her there. You see her every day. Then, every other day. You go out to the bar with your old friends. It's not the same. You get the feeling that every wife tells her husband, if you ever put me in a home like Henry did, I will cut your balls off. You slowly decide not to see your old friends that much. Julia's sister Susan moves to Boulder to be close to her. Uh, be close to her. She visits her every day. You go with her some of the time. Susan buys you an old typewriter and urges you to use it if you won't see a therapist. You won't. You like Susan. Months go by. Oh, Bucket died. Julia doesn't remember him when you tell her. Sometimes it takes her a minute to lock in on you. In the back of your mind, you believe it's because you see her less and less. And seeing her less and less makes her forget you more, you think. Summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. <laughs> 